everyone and welcome to Tax Shorts. My name is Aisha Bedwe Ibe. I'm the tax leader here at PwC Ghana. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Maxwell Intui, who's a senior manager in our indirect tax business. Today we're talking about customs bonded warehouses. Customs bonded warehousing regime mainly covers a custom procedure whereby imported goods are kept under the control of the custom division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Essentially what that means is that importers bring in goods and then the duty on those goods are deferred until a later date and the goods are kept in a specialized area which is controlled by customs or in some instances owned by private individuals. So you can have a customs bonded warehouse or a private bonded warehouse. And within this controlled area, the importer may get permission to do some few handling or do packaging to be able to load the goods within that space. And then whenever they are ready to bring the goods into the country or into Ghana, then they will pay the duty. Or in some instances, they may even re-export the goods outside Ghana. Any importer um, who is registered with the customs division can make an application, but of course there are certain requirements to be met. You come and inspect your premises, your bonded warehouse or the warehouse to make sure that it is safe, it is safely gated, and so that at least to make sure that when things go in there, they can be well kept. In some instances, you may need um, FDA approval to be able to make sure that whatever is there is actually safe and secure. And also one thing that you must know is that there are also timelines depending on the type of good that you want to keep in that warehouse. So for instance, for perishable goods, you are given up to three months to keep them in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. If it is a general good, you are given a year to keep them in the warehouse. If it is raw materials, you have up to two years to keep them in the warehouse and you can still apply to the Commissioner General to obtain an extension for up to 12 months for raw materials. So these are some of the rules and um, because you are going to keep goods in the warehouse uh, to pay the duty later, you would have to get insurance for your premises and you also need to execute a bond to secure the premise and also for the value of the duty so that the state do not lose revenue. So whatever am, uh, amount of duty that is being deferred, you are expected to execute a bond to cover that duty that has not been paid so that at a later time, whenever you pay, then you can be operating within that. And if you flout rules, then it means that you have to be liable to pay the duty that has been deferred. It comes with a lot of benefit, especially for the importer. Mm. Uh, the principal one is the cash flow. You can imagine bringing in a large uh, amount of cargo and you're asked to pay all the duty of maybe 10 million in, in a whole lot. But in this case, you are not expected to make that upfront payment. You are expected to just keep a bond and you keep the item in the warehouse whenever you are ready so you can be releasing them as and when you need them. So for cash flow purposes, it actually um, helps. And also, as I indicated, in some instances, you may realize that the demand for your good may not be so much in the country. So you can now decide to even re-export them outside of Ghana. So in that case, you don't lock up funds in paying that upfront duty. So you just keep them in bond and then when you realize that it may not move as you expected, now you can even take it outside Ghana. And if you even look at it for the side of the government, government want to create an environment where the country is seen to be friendly to businesses. So this is one way that government can uh, government uses to promote investment and to promote businesses, such that businesses know that they do not need to lock up capital and also to make sure that the, the port is also cleared and you don't have a lot of cargo at the port. So these are some of the mechanisms that the government use to promote businesses and also to make sure that uh, movement within the port are also done. And later when an assessment is made, I, it also even would minimize disputes. For instance, at the bonded warehouse, you have the custom officer present and then the importer is also there. So by the time 
the item is being cleared, both parties are there and the values and everything is agreed so it even minimizes disputes. So these are some of the benefits that comes with the uh, customs bonded warehousing region. So Maxwell, the benefits do sound quite enormous, especially the cash flow one. So how would you recommend somebody approaching this whole attaining custom bonded warehouse status? So my recommendation would be that you must speak to an expert. It's a very technical area. So speak to the expert, let them explain to you what you can do as we have discussed so they can be able to obtain these benefits under the Customs Act. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Aisha Bedwe Ibe. I'm the tax leader here at PwC Ghana. And today I was joined by my colleague, Maxwell Entry, who is a senior manager in our indirect tax business. Thank you for joining us. See you on the next episode. God bless.